So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, um, we, uh, I'm going to have our panelists introduce themselves. Uh, so if you guys could tell me what your name is, what campus, college, or faculty you're a part of, what year you're in and what you're studying, and where you're from. And we can start with Annika. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Annika. I am in my fifth and final year at the St. George campus. Uh, I am double majoring in health studies and evolutionary anthropology, and I'm a member of Wizard College. Um, and okay, where I'm from, um, I am a commuter student from Alliston, Ontario, which is about an hour to an hour and a half north of the city. Awesome, thank you. Taylor? Hi everyone, um, my name is Taylor. I'm in my third year studying music performance in French Horn in the Faculty of Music on the St. George campus and I'm from Calgary, Alberta. Thank you. Sarit? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarit. I am in my third year at University College on the St. George campus uh, and I'm studying molecular genetics. Uh, and I'm originally, if you couldn't tell from my flag, uh, from the US. I was born and raised in New Jersey, right outside of New York City. Thank you. Kristen? So hey everyone, my name is Kristen. I'm from the Scarborough campus actually, and uh, my program is mental health studies and I minor in linguistics and anthropology and I'm in my fourth year of study and I also am from America and I'm from New York, so right next to you. <laughs> That's very cool that you guys are neighbors. <laughs> Uh, so just before we get started, so I see that there are uh, lots of questions coming in already, which is really great. I do have a question for our panelists. So when you started researching universities, what did, what did you consider? So what factors did you consider? And then why did you choose U of T? And we can start with Sarah. Um, so thanks, Oreo. I knew I wanted to go into the life sciences uh, and I wanted to head into graduate school. Uh, and so I was really interested in the quality of research um, that's, that the schools I had uh, were offering um, and also just what the general campus environment felt like. Um, and so in the end, I ended up choosing U of T um, because we're located right in Toronto. It's an amazing place to be um, and because our research is, is really top notch. Those are excellent reasons. Uh, Taylor? Uh, so when I started looking at schools, uh, two of the really big things for me as a music student was I wanted to see who the professors were, the people that you actually get to learn from and engage with every single day. And I was also really interested in performance opportunities. I wanted to make sure wherever I went, there'd be lots of chances to play in like large ensembles, small ensembles, solo, like group things. Um, so I was looking at that and then I ended up choosing U of T uh, again because of the professors here and I was offered a spot in the studio of my first choice teacher. And then also because of the city, Toronto's got such an amazing art scene and there's so many concerts to go to, so many things to explore. So yeah, that's why I picked U of T. I completely echo that. The, the music scene in Toronto is just fabulous. Uh, Annika? Yeah, so I also, some of the reasons that have been echoed so far, uh, I definitely wanted a campus where I really felt, you know, excited and, you know, enjoyed being there. So being in Toronto was something that was really exciting to me. Even though I'm from the area, I wanted to stay, I was excited to stay. Um, and then just having a lot of flexibility in my time at the school. So I wanted to have a lot of different choices in terms of courses and in terms of extracurriculars. And when I was researching universities, for me, U of T really stuck out as having a lot of options available. Thank you. Kristen? Yeah, my answer is probably going to be similar to the other panelists. Like, U of T does have an amazing reputation, so I was looking for a school um, with a lot of academic rigor, but I also wanted an environment where I would be able to have, like, lots of opportunities, but still kind of have a home base, and U of T just fit all of those requirements, and yeah, so I'm here today. <laughs> Well, we're glad to have you here today. Uh, so let's dive in. So we have a question from Marwan, and they're wondering, what was your first year of university like, and how different was that from the first day of high school? Uh, so we can start with Taylor. Um, my first year was definitely a lot of fun. Um, Looking back, I spent a lot of time going to concerts and just hanging out with friends because it was a time to meet new people, do lots of fun things. And as music students, concerts are a little more educational. So 
definitely a good use of time. Um, and then, yeah, it was just kind of getting used to the group of, I'm a commuter student, so I had to figure out what commuting in Toronto is like, um, and also kind of figuring out what the expectations were in your classes, because it is pretty different coming from high school. Thank you. Uh, Kristen? Yeah, so I'd say my first year, it was a large transition because of moving and everything else, but I feel like UFT had a lot of supports um, that made the transition process like a lot easier. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. And so in some ways, like my first year of university was a bit easier than like my, I say like my first year of high school um, because it's like I've already got had a transition before and there's a lot of supports there. So it was really helpful. So I enjoyed it probably more than my first year or first day of high school. <laughs> That's great to hear. Annika? Yeah, thinking back to my first day of university, I think I was less nervous than I was going into high school. I don't know why high school seems so intimidating to me. Maybe I was more excited to be at university, to be in that next stage of life. Um, I think what really struck me as different from my first day of high school is when you're in your first day of university and you know, making that transition, you have all this free time all of a sudden between your classes, at least for me, that was my case. I think I had about six hours between my two classes. So it was this kind of overwhelming sense of, okay, I have all this free time. What do I do with it? And that's something you learn. You learn what to do with that time over your first year and beyond. Um, but that was definitely the biggest difference between my first day of high school and my first day of university. But I think I had a lot more fun at my first day of university as well. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so I definitely, I remember my first day of high school, I was really stressed, I was small, I was nervous. Um, when I entered university, I was also a little bit nervous, but I remember it being a lot more exciting. I just made some new friends. Um, and there was this whole, you know, beautiful U of T campus uh, to explore. And so I remember, you know, trying to find my classes and all these cool old buildings. Um, and it was, it was very exciting, much more exciting than high school. I bet you were also not as small as you were <laughs> from the first day of high school. Uh, so we have another question, and Olu Shea is wondering, is it easy to double major? Um, and Annika, can you start us off? Yeah, so double majoring is definitely something that is quite easy to do. Um, at UT, you have the option of doing a specialist, which is focused all on one program of interest. You can do a double major or you can do a major and two minors. So all those options are basically the same level of easiness in terms of accessing them. Um, I am a double major. I've been a double major since second year when I chose my programs. And it is very easy to accommodate those courses to fit them into your schedule. Um, and it's a great opportunity to get to explore to areas of interest, especially if you do have two areas that are quite different from one another. So yeah, it is quite easy. Thank you. Uh, so Kirk is wondering, is the St. George campus more competing than the other two campuses? And sorry, we'll go to you with that. Um, so I wouldn't even say uh, the St. George campus is competitive at all. Um, I know I have uh, plenty of classes where I have tons of friends in them. Um, and we'll typically make, you know, course group chats, help each other out there, send notes around. Um, I haven't ever been in a situation where it's adversarial, where it's, you know, me versus another student, someone needs to be the best. Um, we definitely help each other out a lot. I can't exactly speak for the other campuses, but St. George is not competitive, I would say. Kristen? Yeah, so I've actually, I've taken um, classes at like all three campuses at this point, um, which is a really cool feature of U of T in general. And personally, I haven't found like the academic like quality or rigor to be different between any of the campuses um, because a lot of the times teachers and professors from each campus will teach at the other campuses as well. So um, no matter what campus you go to, I say like students tend to be very kind and help each other and work to like, you know, make sure that they're performing to the best of their ability. Cause students here, like, I feel like everyone here is like trying to perform to the best of their academic ability, but they're very kind and try to help other people do the same thing too. That's absolutely correct. Thank you. Uh, so we have another question from Eric and Eric is wondering how different is the initial workload compared to high school? Uh, so Tila, we'll go to you on that. Um, I think in your first couple weeks, it definitely feels a lot more overwhelming than it did in high school. Um, just because I know a lot of people in high school, they don't try as hard or they find the courses a lot easier, so they don't have to work quite as hard. So in your first couple weeks of university, it's definitely going to feel like a lot more work. Um, it's a little bit different for music just because we have our kind of like academic courses and we have a lot of more like hands-on courses where we're playing. So my workload would definitely be a lot different than probably like Sard or Annika's workload. Um, 
it's definitely needs time management though, but after your first couple of weeks of university, it'll get a lot easier. Agreed. Uh, Annika? Yeah, I think what Taylor said about time management is what's most important because yeah, it might feel overwhelming your first couple of weeks, especially when you're getting used to it and you're getting into the swing of things. But if you can have those time management skills, that's really important. Um, I would say, yeah, I found it to be maybe not more work, but a different kind of work, you know, different kinds of assessments, different kinds of learning activities being implemented in tutorials. Maybe that's not probably something you didn't have in high school. Um, that wasn't something I had for me. So that was a new area where I was earning marks and getting grades and things like that through participation. So I think the workload, it might be, it might feel heavier, it might feel lighter, but time management is something that regardless of how the workload feels will be really important. Thank you. And uh, we have another question in this. We've already sort of started talking about this, uh, but Mira is wondering, what is the work uh, free and like free time time balance? And what what is that like for you guys? Uh, Kristen? Can yeah, so I'd say like like um, the other panels were mentioning, it's kind of uh, for me in my first year, it kind of took a little bit getting used to. Um, but you've you've kind of like figure like, okay, I have like around three hours between classes. I can do the readings for this class, maybe like watch this thing to supplement the lecture. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest differences from high school as well. You kind of get outlined, okay, this is what you need to do every week. Um, in university, it's very much up to you. So figuring out that balance, it does take an adjustment, but it is something that you definitely get used to doing once um, you kind of get in the swing of university life. Thank you. Uh, so we've got a question from Vivian and Vivian is wondering, what are your experiences with the colleges or residences? Um, so first, Sarah, if you could please explain what the college system is and then talk about your experience um, with residents as well. Yes, for sure. So on our St. George campus, uh, within the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, students are split into one of seven colleges. Um, and the colleges act as kind of social communities. Um, they're probably most known for offering residence to students, um, but they also have some other services. They have student governments, um, academic supports, things like that. Um, there's no one arts and uh, arts college or business college or science college. They all have kind of even mixtures. Um, they really just differ in kind of their history, the buildings and where they are on campus. Um, so I am a member of university college. I lived on residence in first year and I really enjoyed it. I made a lot of friends there. I met my current roommate there and um, I would definitely recommend. It's a, it's a great community to be a part of um, and it really adds to, to at least my university experience. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Brianna is wondering, is it hard to make friends if you live off campus? So Annika, if you could take this one. Yeah, so that's a really good question. So I've been a commuter student ever since second year. And it obviously is going to come down to each individual person, but I've actually found it maybe almost easier to make friends. Maybe I'm trying harder now that I'm a commuter student. Maybe I'm putting more effort in. Um, but I think there are so many opportunities as a commuter student to make friends. You have your classes, you have your extracurriculars that you're involved with. And I think this kind of goes back to what we were talking earlier about the university not being competitive is that people are always looking to make friends, always looking to meet new people. So taking advantage of those opportunities, um, even if you're a student living off campus, you are still going to have so many opportunities throughout your day to meet people. So it really comes down to just, you know, saying hello to the person beside you in class. I mean, it can be as simple as that. That's how I made one of my closest friends in first year. So. Thank you. Uh, Taylor? I agree with everything that Annika said. Um, I think also going to orientation, for me at least, that was a really great starting point just because I got to meet a couple people and then from there you like meet the people that they met and you can kind of make your friend groups from that. Um, living off campus was also kind of nice because we all had somewhere to go so in first year everyone would come like to my apartment and play cards. So it's kind of nice just having a different place to go. And then also being able to see more parts of the city because you can kind of get sucked into being on like the campus all day. But if you live off campus then it's like an opportunity to actually get to go to different places with your friends. That's a good point, thank you. Uh, Sarah is wondering, is it easy to find part-time jobs near campus? Uh, Kristen? 
Yeah, so I can't exactly speak about finding part time jobs near campus. I know I've had friends that have found like different forms of employment off campus. Um, I can't say that they had any difficulty with that, but I do know that for U of T, we have our own career learning network, which is basically like um, a website where U of T students can find things like volunteer opportunities, research opportunities, and jobs that are part time or through like a work study program, which is basically like jobs on campus that um, are part time, but it's like facilitated within the university. So it's really nice because they understand when you have exams, when you need to study, when you need time off. So there's lots of different job opportunities on campus, including like part time too. Thank you. And I know that the CLN also lists off campus postings as well. So if you were looking for stuff off campus, you can definitely still use the CLN for that. Uh, so Mary Bell is wondering, what do you think it's the, is the biggest difference between high school and university? Uh, we can start with Sarit. Um, I think in high school, um, things kind of just get handed to you. So your, your teacher will say, okay, this is what we're learning today. Do this worksheet. We're learning something slightly different tomorrow. Um, and you have you know class every day or something, or at least I did. Um, in university, you have a lot more freedom. And so the professor will say, we're going to meet on Monday. You know, you have one week, read the chapter, and we're going to discuss it next week. Um, and so it really comes down to you have to be more responsible. You have to plan your time. You have to know what's happening. Um, but overall, it's a lot more fun in university when you can just do what you want when you want to. Definitely the choice you get in university is a big problem. Um, so Nancy is wondering, is it difficult to connect with people in such a large campus? Uh, Annika? Yeah, so I think UT St. George campus, obviously speaking from personal experience, it is a large campus. That is something I know a lot of people get concerned about when they think about making friends. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities to interact in smaller communities. So obviously we already kind of talked about your college potentially or your faculty, if that's going to be a lot smaller, your campus as well. Um, so meeting those people during orientation, during residence, your classes, definitely get involved in clubs. Clubs are a really great way to kind of have that community within the larger campus to get to know people with someone our interests, um, make friends or connections there. So yes, the campus is large, there are lots of students, um, but there are a lot of opportunities to make those smaller communities where you meet friends. Agreed, thank you. Uh, and just a reminder before we continue, um, I know that folks might have some admissions questions. Uh, just so you know, our students won't be answering those, so they'll just be focused on their student experience, and we'll have time for admissions questions at 4 p.m. during our Q&A. Awesome. So Ava is wondering, do you feel living on campus or off campus has a big impact on your experience? So we can start with Kristen. So I personally have commuted like ever since my first year. Um, and I can't say that I found it particularly difficult to make friends or make connections with people. And I'd say like for my friends, cause I do have friends that have lived on residence as well. And I think that they'd say a similar thing um, because there's so many opportunities for students to interact through, even if you're commuting, you might hang up till you get to the bus stop, for example, or um, you might even like be in the same classes, same club activities. Um, so I'd say like, regardless of whether you live on the commuter side or resident side, at least from my personal experience, um, it's not like a huge difference in terms of like making friends or getting connected to people. Thank you. Sorry, I know you've had both of those experiences. So do you have a bit of a comparison? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of different um, just in that like your main hub on campus is a little bit different. So when I was in first year, I lived on residence and I could kind of just store my stuff in my, my little residence room um, and kind of shuttle back there whenever I wanted. Um, but now that I'm commuting to campus, um, I just bring all my stuff with me at the beginning of the day, spend the day on campus, and then come back. Um, I'm still spending tons of time on campus, hanging out with friends, going to class, um, but nothing, you know, fundamentally really changes. Thank you. Uh, so Leticia is wondering, what is an advice you wish you had as a freshman, so in your first year of university? Uh, Taylor? I think in first year, um, 
honestly, if someone had told me to relax, that would have been really good. I know I was really stressed in first year, just kind of adjusting to like, how do I manage my time? Like, am I doing this right? Is this going to work out? So I think in first year, just taking the time to take a couple breaths, get yourself a planner, write it all down, and then just make sure you're having fun and still getting your work done. That is very solid advice. Uh, Kristen, um, I have a question for you. So you said that you've taken classes at all three of our campuses. And Sia is wondering, how would you say the classes differ at each of the campuses? Yeah, so I'd say in terms of, and I think I mentioned this previous, like earlier, that in terms of like the academic quality, I found them all to be pretty similar. Um, I'd say the major difference is like some of the resources that you can access at each campus can slightly differ in name or um, in how you access certain things. So, um, for example, um, we have accessibility um, offices at each at all of the campuses to assist students who might have like a disability or accessibility need. Um, the process to sign up or get registered with them might be slightly different between the campuses or accessing things like the writing center that can help you like with writing essays or um, doing work in that way might be it might be have a di slightly different process so that's the I guess that's the main difference I found um, the other main thing is like certain like deadlines like for example like to pay tuition or to like um, adjust your course load or, and things like that might slightly differ between campuses because um, each campus has their own process in that way. Um, but I say those are the main differences. It's not anything like substantial in terms of like taking a class, I'd say. Thank you. Uh, so Rosalind is wondering if you're not sure about which residence yet, um, what can you do? So basically when you were picking your residence, if you guys could tell us, what were some of the factors that you were considering? What was some of the reasons that you chose the residence that you did? Uh, so sorry, we'll start with you. Sorry, I lost my mute button there. Um, when I was applying to residence, um, when I applied to university, I was mostly universities. I was mostly applying to American schools. And so I looked around and I said, OK, well, I would probably want the residence that's most like an American school. Um, and so I picked University College because that's what it looks like. Um, in retrospect, I was wrong. They're all pretty much like American schools. Um, but uh, it was really nice buildings. Um, University College actually has two kind of old historic buildings and one kind of new one. So you can you can pick what you want there. Um, and it's really central to campus. Um, so my commutes in first year to courses were like two and a half minutes. It was really nice. Thank you. Uh, Annika? Yeah, so for me, the biggest thing I was considering is whether I wanted dormitory or apartment style residence. So U of T has two kinds of residence. So dormitory is maybe a more traditional room. If you're thinking a double room with two beds, you have a roommate, shared bathrooms in a hall and a meal plan with a dining hall. And then apartment style is you're basically living in an apartment with roommates like you would at off campus, but it's non campus residence. So for me, it came down to I wanted apartment style, I wanted to cook, um, you have a kitchen, so that's something you can do. Um, I wanted an individual room, and I kind of like the idea of having that sort of similar to off campus living situation, but it really is a very personal decision. I really recommend doing lots of research into it because we can give you why we chose our residences, but at the end of the day, it's a very personal decision. Thank you. And Angela has put a great link in the chat uh, where you can see all the different residences that we offer and basically can compare that and figure out which one that you would like. Uh, so um, we have another question and is how is life at St. George? Is it very busy and how is the multiculturalism? So, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so life at St. George is pretty great. Um, I love it. Um, I'm kind of busy, but that's mostly of my own choosing. Um, you can generally be as busy or as not busy um, as you want. Um, and the multiculturalism is crazy, especially coming from the US. Um, my friends here, it's like the UN when we sit down. Um, my one friend's from Alberta. I have a Russian friend, an Egyptian friend. Um, and it's, it's really great. I do love it. And the food, oh, the multiculturalism and the food, underrated. Absolutely. The food really is the best part of Toronto. Literally anything that you want, you can definitely find it here. Uh, so Maniac is wondering, what is the difference between the three campuses and what is the environment like in each of the campuses? So Kristen, we'll go to you on that. 
Yeah, so I'd say like each campus um, kind of differs in terms of um, I'd say certain programs, like some programs might be specific to one campus versus another. There are certain programs like, for example, like biology, psychology, those are offered at all three campuses. Um, and another key difference, it might be in like certain club offerings that are dif that differ between the campuses, as well as like the just the physical environment. Um, the Mississauga campus has a different look and sometimes feel compared to the Scarborough campus compared to the St. George campus. Um, and so those are kind of like some of the key differences. And then also just size, the St. George campus is located in the downtown area and as such, it's, it's a lot larger than the Mississauga and Scarborough campus. Um, so I think, so is there another, is there a second part to that question or was it just that? Uh, the other part to the question was the environment, but I think you covered that pretty well. Okay, great. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Uh, so man's wondering, what is one complaint you have about U of T having studied there for a while now? And Annika will go to you on that. <laughs> yeah, this is always an interesting question. I think, I don't, I will say, I will preface it by saying that I don't have any really like clear complaints and that's a good thing. There's not something that's immediately coming to mind. Um, I think one complaint that I have, and it kind of comes out of a positive of the school is because there are so many different, you know, courses you can take and different departments that you can interact with and all sorts of amazing opportunities that obviously does at some point come with the negative of there can be a lot of, I guess, red tape. Sometimes you have to, you know, try to be emailing one office to get something approved and you might have to wait a while or email them again or try to call them or something. I think that's maybe happened like twice in at this point, five years for me. So it doesn't happen too often and I will take having the opportunities, but I think my one complaint is I wish it was just at times a little more cohesive, but only happened twice. Thank you. Um, I, I do think that having all the choices, it's like, oh, I could have taken this and I could have taken that, but there's only 24 hours in a day. So, uh, so Irene is wondering, is UFT really as cutthroat as people say it, it is? And how do you manage your academics? And Taylor will go to you on that. Um, I think the music faculty is both more competitive and less competitive than all the other faculties. Um, just because in our first week of school, we all have to submit well, it used to be in person, but right now we have to submit um, audition tapes and then they actually rank everyone on the instruments and you get placed in different ensembles uh, based on your audition tape. So I think in that sense, we're pretty competitive just for like the first week or so while we're all kind of in like that angst of waiting for our results. Um, but after that, everything gets a lot more collegial because we all know each other. We all get along really well. We all learn from each other. So after you kind of get those results, it's really not cutthroat anymore. It's just kind of one week of anxiety. Um, and then I personally manage my academics through my planner, as I mentioned before, I write absolutely everything down because I'm super forgetful. So I write it down, I schedule what I'm going to do everything just because like, it's hard to keep track of everything sometimes. And then yeah, that's gotten me through the last two years. And I think it's going to get me through uh, two more. <laughs> yeah, your calendar really becomes your best friend, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, so we have another question in uh, David is wondering, how is the workload different from a single major to a double major? Um, and sorry, if you could also explain how majors, specialists and minors work as well in your answer to this. Yes, for sure. So at U of T, um, the way you can kind of split up your courses is you can either take one specialist like I am, where you do all of your courses uh, generally in one specific area, um, or you can do a double major, so you can kind of split your time between two things, or you can do a major and then two, two separate minors. Um, and so a double major is, it's considered a full course load, right? It's, it's the average amount of work you would expect. Um, you can't really take just one single major, like they won't let you graduate, it's like not a full program. Um, and so the equivalent, I guess, at U of T is a specialist. Um, and the workload between the two is, is equivalent. Um, I wouldn't say there's any particular difference that I've noticed. Thank you. That was a really excellent explanation. Uh, so Annika, we've got a fun question for you. Uh, so Arisha is wondering, what is the party scene like at U of T, specifically at the St. George campus? Hmm. Not the right person to ask this. I am not, I'm more of an introvert, believe it or not. But um, the party scene at U of T, so I really can't speak too much to 
if there's a party scene on campus, like I said, I've commuted ever since um, second year, but I would say residents, there are definitely, um, you know, respecting quiet hours. There were parties you could go to if you wanted to go and see like young people from your floor, go with your roommates. I would say being in Toronto, I think for the St. George campus, a lot of times people will go off campus to access, I guess, entertainment or access parties. I mean, there's a lot to do off campus. This is less a party thing. Like I said, I'm the one person to ask, but we have this thing called Nuit Blanche that happens every year and it's just all night art festival. Um, so that's a lot of fun to go to. So I think a lot of times people will go off campus to kind of access nightlife or entertainment or things like that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there are definitely a lot of options available around uh, U of T and just in Toronto in general. Uh, so we've got another question and, um, oh, sorry, it's jumping a little bit on my screen and I lost it. Okay, so Carly is wondering, um, how do you feel about the class sizes? Uh, so we'll go to Kristen on that one. Yeah, so I feel like class sizes is one of the things when I was going in, I was kind of a little bit intimidated by the class sizes. Um, but honestly, once you kind of get into a groove of things, I it's just like pretty normal to me. I remember my largest class in my first year had like almost like I think 700 students. Um, but in, I also had a French class that was a lot on the smaller side that had like around 40 students. So I'd say it's, it's very manageable. And one nice thing is that for the larger classes, you tend to have these um, things called tutorials. Um, which are basically smaller, almost lecture sections, but they're taught by um, a teaching assistant who is either a graduate student in a program or sometimes an upper year student who's done really well in that course. So you can get like that one on one assistance and help. And um, one kind of um, really great thing to take advantage of and a tip I always recommend to students is to go to office hours. Um, these are these, um, it's basically hours set aside from the lecture where the professor will just be in their office or if they're doing a virtual class, they'll just be have like a Zoom link probably. And you can basically just go to them and ask them questions about the course, bring up any concerns you have. And sometimes students don't take advantage of them. So they kind of just sit there and work on their own thing or just chill for that hour or however long they have that time. But um, using all of those um, resources, um, it really helps you to like feel like, OK, like I know what I'm doing and I have people or persons I can access if I need help with things. So the class size has never really like played a huge role in accessing it for me. Thank you. I definitely echo the, the going to office hours. Uh, your professors want to talk to you. They're always mentioning about it. So definitely do that if you can. Uh, so Tiffany is wondering, what made you pick your college? So sorry, we can start with you. Uh, yeah, so like I said before, I picked my college because it kind of seemed the most like an American experience. I was just wrong, like it, they're all pretty much the same. Um, I picked it because it looked cool on the website, um, which is, I guess, not the worst advice. Um, but yeah, the, the big differences they have are really their history um, and, and their buildings. So where they are and what they kind of look like, what kind of architecture. Um, I don't know about everybody else. Uh, Annika? Um, yeah, just, just the residents, like, there, really, there really wasn't that much else um, for me. I just saw Windsor residents and I absolutely fell in love with it. So it was as simple as that. Woodsworth is a beautiful residence, I agree. The views, amazing. Uh, so Zachary's wondering, how are the extracurricular activities at U of T? Uh, Taylor? Um, so I actually haven't done a lot of the extracurriculars because I'm pretty busy with my classes. Um, but something that I have been a part of is I've done a lot of uh, different music groups that aren't associated with U of T but rehearse at U of T. So I was on, in the Toronto Symphony Youth Orchestra my first year and then I was in the Hannaford Silver Youth Band last year. So even though I wasn't a part of a lot of U of T extracurriculars, there are so many things going on in the city that there's just tons of things to join. Thank you. Kristen? Yeah, so I've gotten involved in a lot of different extracurriculars on my campus um, and I've enjoyed all, all, all the different experiences and different skills that you learn from them. I've been in um, psychological health society. Um, what else? I've also been involved with like the admissions and student recruitment, which is part of why I'm here today. Um, and one of my favorite clubs is that actually I'm part of the UTSC. We have a glee club on campus, so it's really fun. So we get together, we sing, we don't do the dancing part, unfortunately. Um, but it's 
it's a great time and it's one of the like I'd say extracurriculars are the best way to like get involved and get to meet people and make new friends. And I've also found when I'm more involved in extracurricular, I actually do better in my classes. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a great, it's a great time all around. <laughs> that is so cool to hear. I didn't know that there was a glee club. That is very exciting. I'm very much like a choir person. So that's, that's exciting news to me. Um, so we have another question and um, is, a, oh, sorry, just keeps moving all over my screen. Um, where is it? Yeah, so Isabel is wondering, are all the classes in person this year? And sorry, we can go to my hat. Um, so in two letters, no. Um, some of them are online. Some of them are in, some of them are some of them are in person. Um, but you have generally a good uh, idea of, of what you want to pick. So from last year, I wasn't really a fan of online classes. Um, I was kind of ready to get back on campus. And so all but one of my courses are in person. Um, and it's it's amazing. I really like it. Um, I know I have friends who kind of they're commuters, they like staying online. And so they were like, yeah, I'll just take some online classes. That's nice for me. Um, it's, we've got to the point where it's really, you know, what you kind of want to do. Thank you. Uh, so Mira is wondering, um, so a common thing about U of T is that students are seen as just a number to their professors. How true would you say that is? Annika? I would say that to keep it really simple, it's not true. I would say that obviously in your first year, your larger lectures, if you just attend the lecture and you never speak to your professor, yeah, you might end up being a number in a large lecture hall. But there are a lot of ways that in first year in larger classes that you can remedy that. So going to office hours, like we've already said, um, sometimes in your tutorials, even your professors will show up, you know, just to get to meet people. They like to meet their students too, as well. So I think there are a lot of ways. It's I don't want to say it's entirely on you because there will definitely be opportunities in the upper years. My classes are very small at this point, like my largest class this year is 30 people. So definitely not a number, definitely getting to know my professors really well. But even in first year, you don't have to just be a number, but there, you may need to take that like one or two extra steps to stand out and to get to know your professors so that they know you by name and not just as, you know, student number or whatever. Thank you. Uh, so then these questions, I'm just going to combine them a little. So Cindy is wondering, how did you choose a program in which you wanted to major in? And did this happen in high school or in first year? And Richa is also right now basically in that same position. They are torn between biology and engineering, and they want advice about how to choose. Uh, so we can start with Sare. Um, So when I was in high school, I did a little bit of um, uh, plant research. And so I found that I was really interested in, the, interested in the life sciences. I was like, yep, this is definitely what I want to do. And so I entered the Faculty of Arts and Science on the St. George campus in the life sciences stream. Um, and then from there, at the end of your first year, you choose your program. And so I kind of shopped around, I looked and I said, well, molecular genetics sounds pretty cool. Um, I looked at some of the courses that they offer and I was like, yeah, this is what I want to take in my upper years. And so that's how I picked it. Um, and so my advice is if you're trying to choose between biology and engineering, um, do a little bit of homework see what courses you would end up taking, um, read the syllabi, maybe see if you can find some notes online, I don't know, um, and figure out, you know, or find, find the final exams, they often post those, um, and see, you know, which one of these tests would I rather take. Um, that's just how I do things. That's really good advice. Uh, Taylor? I actually had a really hard time back in high school trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was really torn between do I want to go into music because that's something I've been doing a lot of obviously in high school or do I want to go into business. So I actually applied to um, at a whole bunch of schools for both. So I kind of did music as a first choice, business as a second choice. At one school I could combine them so I just applied for both so I could put off the decision making process a little bit longer. Um, and then once it came down to actually choosing a school and choosing a program, I feel like by that point you've like had it like you've been thinking about it long enough that you just kind of know which one to choose so instead of I know I was kind of putting it off for so long just accept which one's the right choice because you do know and it's going to make your life a lot easier if you just accept it earlier on. Thank you. Uh, so Queenly is wondering if you can give a run through on how your days typically go and uh, so when do you study, when do you go to class, when do you relax, uh, that, that sort of thing. Uh, so Kristen? 
Yeah, so for me, I usually try to make sure that the classes I'm taking are kind of later in the day because I am not a morning person whatsoever. Um, so I usually would wake up, um, kind of like get ready for my class whenever I get up. Um, and usually I would, I tend to be more of a night owl person. So I would like use the time in between to either study or do other work or do other activities that I enjoy. Um, and of course, like take some time to like work on like extracurricular stuff that I'm involved in, like work, or um, even just hang out with like family and friends and stuff. It's very, I'd say like, I can't say that I have a typical day because I'm very flexible with things. Um, I kind of just go with the rhythm of how my day is going or things I might need to do outside of school too. Thank you. Uh, Annika? Yeah, so I kind of like to treat my school days sort of as like a typical nine to five work day. That, that kind of is something that works for me. Um, I try to, I, I'm okay with working in the morning. I get up quite early so I can manage to do that. Um, but I try to kind of, you know, have that time during the day to do my classes, whether that's classwork or having lectures, um, to do my part-time jobs, to do things like that. And so I'll kind of work pretty much continuously throughout the day. And then that gives me time, you know, after dinner, in the evening, to be with family, to be with friends. And I think that's something that works for me. So I think Krista and I obviously have very different ways of how we structure a day as a student, but they totally work for both of us. So it's finding out what works for you. That might not happen right away. I didn't start doing this in until maybe second year, um, but you'll figure out what works best for you. And you have that flexibility when planning your courses of choosing later classes or earlier classes. Agreed, thank you. Uh, so if we has a question and you're basically wondering if, if the program area that you apply to, do you have to stick with that? Or can you change your major when you arrive at U of T? Uh, sorry? Uh, so in short, no. In the Faculty of Arts and Science, when you apply, um, as Avery is correct, you, you apply and are admitted into one of six streams. And then at the end of your first year, you choose your program. Um, it's, you're totally fine. You could have, I could have entered in, in life sciences and then done English and psychology if I wanted. Um, the only thing is it's to your advantage to choose the stream you think you want to go into um, because course enrollment, you're given priority. So as a life sciences student, I got first uh, access to the biology and the ecology lectures. Um, and so if you want to change, you might get a little bit of a headache in there, um, but it's totally doable. U of T is structured generally, so you can be very flexible about where you go. Thank you. Uh, so we have another question, and Vinash is wondering, did you face any difficulty adjusting to the new environment? Uh, so Kristen? I'd say that yes, um, I just, the, like my personality, like getting into university, I just, is, I'm a very like, I want everything to go the way that I planned it. And obviously life does not happen that way. Um, so it was difficult, it was very difficult adjusting as well as like moving from the United States to here. Um, all of these factors just like contributed to like such just general stress. But I think that a lot of the, that U of T knows that of course, like students will have that transition problem sometimes. Um, so like I know the International Student Center had a lot of events to like help with like making friends and getting used to the city, um, which really helped a lot as well as like I definitely did con um, consult like our health and wellness center to get like counseling at times if I just want to talk to somebody. So using those facilities really helped a lot with the transition and made it a lot less stressful than it could have been otherwise. So I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Uh, so we have another question and E. Kelly is wondering, what has U of T done in response to COVID and how has that affected student life? Annika? Yeah, so um, obviously the biggest transition has been the shift to online classes, which happened for basically all of last year, almost every class in most faculties, departments, areas um, like that were online. So that was obviously a bit of a transition. It was interesting at first getting used to it, but I think I was impressed by how quickly everyone did get used to it right when COVID started. Um, I think definitely people are more used to being engaging in an online environment. Obviously, we're doing an event like this right now where we're engaging with people. Um, so that was one thing they did. They've continued to, with the transition back to in-person, make sure that students are feeling safe. So making sure the classrooms are being cleaned, um, respecting the mask mandates. 
um, mandatory vaccinations, things like that, just to make sure that students are feeling safe, are feeling comfortable, and that we're able to continue with in-person classes. Because obviously some people prefer online, in-person, but generally we would like to be together with our classmates. Thank you. Uh, so just before I continue, um, I see that there are a lot of questions and they do keep coming in. Uh, but I'm just going to remind you that you can upvote questions that you want to see answered. And I would encourage you to do that. Uh, so that way we can get through the questions that are uh, most popular and that people want to see answered. Uh, so this one's for you, Taylor. Are music classes or groups available to non-majors? For sure. So um, if you're in engineering, there's actually an option to do um, a performance minor. So a lot of engineers take, um, they do that because then they can participate in our ensembles and take courses like our introduction to computer applications, which I'm in right now. Um, but there's also lots of campus music groups. So the engineering faculty, they have the engineering orchestra, but I know sometimes they're like missing certain instruments. So it's super easy to join that because they're just desperate for more people. We also have other great orchestras like the um, Oh, I can't totally remember what it's called. It's like the Campus Philharmonic Orchestra, which is run by a really amazing uh, conductor in the Faculty of Music. So there's lots of things going on on campus that aren't related to music majors so that everyone can actually get to participate and play some great music together. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to add, I'm a life sciences student and I'm in the Campus Philharmonic Orchestra. It's a, it's a great time. Awesome. I'm glad that we have lots of bands with music here. I also did choir when I was in uh, U of T. It was a non-edition choir because I can't sing, uh, but it was really fun and I definitely encourage it. Uh, so Vivian is wondering, how are the mental health services at U of T? Uh, Annika? Yeah, so U of T has a lot of mental health supports available for students. Um, obviously, health and wellness is a main resource where you can go to get counseling. Um, U of T has also launched fairly recently a new website. I think it's called NAVI, um, and it's a basically online um, resource where you can see all the services that are available. You can get help if you need it urgently, or if you're just looking to. Uh, thank you, Angela. If you're looking to eventually um, reach out and talk to somebody, and I would say beyond even just the official service that are offered your professors and classmates are also there to talk to if you want more informal support you know if you're feeling stressed and you just want somebody to talk to because it happens I think we all felt stressed at some point during our time at U of T or at any school um, so it's really important to just reach out whether you need that more formal support or whether you just want to talk to somebody like your professor or like your classmates. Thank you. Um... I just gonna find my next question. Uh, so Zara is wondering which is better to do, a major or a specialist degree? Uh, sorry. Um, so there's no right answer here. Um, it's really whatever you want. So for me, I entered. I'm really focused molecular genetics. I was like, this is the one thing I want to do, and so I just take a specialist, so I don't have to worry about other things. Um, if you're interested in in two separate things, if I was also interested, I have a friend who's does drama and biochemistry. And so if you have two kind of competing interests, you can do those together um, as a major. Um, in terms of long-term prospects, I haven't heard any evidence about, you know, graduate schools want you to do one thing or another, or jobs want you to do one thing or another. Um, it's really whatever you feel like doing. Thank you. Um, Quinley is wondering, have any of you done co-op during your time at UFC? And if so, how is the experience? I'm gonna direct that to Kristen, because I know you're at UTSC. Yes, so um, I'm personally not in the co-op program, but I have lots of friends who have been, and I was initially in the program, but um, because I wasn't sure about different program changes and stuff like that, I ended up not continuing. Um, but that being said, the co-op program is amazing, and it's really nice that you have that opportunity to get work experience while going to school, and you get assistance and interview training throughout all of that. Um, a close friend of mine who was in the co-op program for psychology ended up getting a position at Baycrest hospital and ended up doing a research being a research assistant and even got it like cited on like a journal article which is like really cool and um, she wouldn't have had that opportunity without being a part of the co-op program um, that being said there's definitely lots of different um, job options and even like integrated study options um, throughout all three campuses so um, you definitely have options no matter where you go but speaking specifically for co-op and I haven't I've 
the friends that I have in the program have had great experiences with it and getting job opportunities through that. Thank you. Uh, so we've got a fun question. So what are your favorite spots to go to for food or fun at the St. George campus area? And I'm just going to expand this question um, a bit just because I know Kristen is at Scarborough and I've heard a lot of good things about the food scene at Scarborough. So, <laughs> so we're going to ask you that as well. So let's start with Taylor. There's so many fun things to do though. Um, for food, I spent way too much time in first year at this taco place that's about a 20 minute walk from campus. I'm celiac, so I need gluten-free food and they have gluten-free churros. So there's just tons of different options for different like dietary restrictions. Um, there's also a bunch of like gluten-free bakeries by campus. I know obviously you're not all celiac like me, but there's so many really amazing food places that are like right off campus. And then for fun, I would just recommend looking into the art scene. Uh, in first year, I went to all sorts of concerts. I saw Bastille in Colorado. I also went to see different kind of recitals that were going on at the Glenn Gould School. You can go to operas, you can go to ballets, you can see the orchestra, you can see the Toronto Brass Band. So there's tons of different things going on and it's literally a Google away. Most of it I find on Facebook. So if you're interested, you can just look on Facebook. That sounds so fun, thank you. Sorry? Uh, yeah, so for food, I think the classic response, there's this brown food truck on campus. Um, it's just, we just call it the brown food truck. Top tier poutine, like unbelievable. Um, and so any time of the day, I will go there. Um, in terms of fun, Toronto has a lot of uh, green spaces. And so there's a dog park right around the corner from my apartment. Um, and sometimes if I get bored, I'll just go like sit there and watch the dogs. Um, but we just have like regular old parks too. Those are fun. Um, and it's, it's nice to go for a walk, get a little bit of exercise, and uh, breathe in some fresh air. Agreed. Thank you. Annika? Well, I was going to say brown food truck as well, so maybe that's two votes for the brown food truck. I would say there's a whole row of food trucks usually on St. George Street, so definitely go check those out. Um, I, again, love brown food truck, but I'm, there are lots of good ones, and I've heard good things about all of them. Um, oh, I love Toronto, so I'm going to try to like minimize how many things I say because I love so many areas of the city. Um, so I'll say one general thing. There are a lot of um, individual neighborhoods throughout Toronto. So one of my favorite things to do is to go to a neighborhood and check it out. Uh, I love Bloor West Village. It's not too far from campus. It's a, a subway or a streetcar ride. Um, but another thing that I really specifically like is the St. Lawrence Market. So that's basically core downtown um really really nice markets so what do you want like fresh produce or meats or cheeses or bread or anything like that there's a lot of really great things to go there and i have been going there ever since i was very little so i love that place so much i love the st lawrence market i always feel like i'm in a rom-com or something when i'm shopping there it's like great vibes uh kristen okay so there's actually let me narrow it down a little bit in my mind. So I think my favorite place on campus to like get something to drink in terms of food, um, we have a cha time on campus. So that's a really great addition. So I love getting bubble tea and going there a lot. Um, my other favorite place, um, we have Nasir's hot dog stand on campus. And the person who runs it is just such a, uh, such a nice person. Like he remembers your order and everyone my name. And it's honestly the best hot dogs that I've had in like my life. Um, so it's just, it's always a great time. And in terms of things I do um, for fun, um, I'd say one of the favorite things, I, I really like going to like art galleries and going to things like that. So on campus, we have the Doris McCarthy Art Gallery at UTSC and they have different exhibitions. So so it's always cool to check out, especially between classes when I have nothing to do. But I also like going downtown to the um, Art Gallery of Ontario as well, because they always have really cool stuff going on. And as well as like um, locally, like for a lot of different fun things to do, we have Scarborough Town Center, um, which is like kind of our local mall that always has like things to do. There's shopping things and they have events sometimes as well. Um, so yeah, that's my fun. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so we've got about five more minutes. So I'm going to try to get through the next couple questions really quickly. Uh, so Kristen, we've got a question specifically for you. And someone's wondering, uh, what do you plan on doing with your mental health studies degree? And what are the opportunities that are available? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, I really am aiming in, to go into like psychotherapy. Um, specifically, um, I'm personally like I'm religious, I'm Christian, so I want to go into like Christian counseling. So that's kind of my main aim. Um, but there's lots of different opportunities to get involved in like the mental health sector, because as we know, like mental health is becoming a larger conversation in society. Um, there's even in, there's opportunities to get involved in policy, um, social work, and then, of course, like the traditional like psychologist, um, psychiatrist or psychotherapist, which is like a therapy. Um, so those are a lot of different options. And there's lots. And so one thing that I'm doing right now to kind of prepare is like one thing I think people in general do. They try to take positions or extracurricular or like on campus job opportunities while they're in school so they can get that experience either through co-op or outside of that. So right now I'm doing a work study position with the health and wellness office at the Scarborough campus where I'm a peer supporter, which is basically kind of like I'm not a full therapist, obviously, but I get trained to like give like some counseling or advice to other students. So that's a really great program. And um, I'm sure that other campuses have other various opportunities. Like if you're interested in like mental health research. I know a lot of professors in the psychology fields do to have different research opportunities in that too. So yeah, that's kind of my plan, my aim for now. Um, might change, but probably not. <laughs> Thank you. Those, that's some really great work that you're doing. Uh, so we've got another question from Jimena and they're wondering, how is life in Toronto, particularly in terms of transport? And can you walk to all your classes? Annika? Yeah, so I'll actually answer the second question first, just since it's a little quicker. Um, yes, you can walk to all your classes on the St. George campus. It's definitely, um, it looks really big when you look at it on a map sometimes. It's really not. It's about maybe max a 15 minute walk from the furthest end of campus to the other furthest end. Um, chances are your classes are not even going to be that far apart. And then Toronto as a whole is very easy to navigate. So not only from campus, but from any point, but campus specifically, we have two streetcar um, lines and two subway lines that intersect with the campus. So it is really nice because that can basically get you to anywhere in Toronto. Um, there's several other subway lines that those connect with as well as streetcar lines, there's buses. Um, and then it connects also to Union Station, which has our Go Transit, which is for basically all of Ontario. So it's very easily accessible, um, not only in Toronto, but if you're looking at commuting from anywhere within the greater Toronto area as well. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so there's just one question here that I'm just quickly going to answer. Uh, so Avery is wondering uh, what it's like for me personally, um, using a different set of pronouns and not falling within a binary gender, and if professors and classmates are supportive and how I managed housing. So I did live in in his house, uh, in his residence in my first year, and they do have uh, gender inclusive housing. So that was like very much not an issue for me. Um, in terms of professors and my classmates, um, the Sexual Gender Diversity Office was really helpful in terms of navigating that. And then also they have these really helpful pronoun pins that I wore and um, every day to my classes. And professors and my classmates were generally really helpful. Um, I was also in a sexual gender, sexual SDS sexual diversity studies program. Um, and uh, obviously that was um, related uh, so that I didn't, I didn't really have um, any issues with that. Uh, but for LGBT support services on campus, there's this sexual gender diversity office and there are also a lot of queer clubs on campus that are available to support students. Um, okay, so I have one final que uh, question for our audience not for the audience, my bad, for our panels. Um, so just as a wrap up, um, I'm wondering what is one piece of advice that you would have for students when they're in the process of choosing their university? Uh, let's start with Annika. Yeah, so choosing your university is a very big decision. It's hard to come up with just one piece of advice. Um, I guess obviously everyone who's here is already on the right track. You're doing your research, you're attending sessions where you can learn about whether U of T feels a good fit for you, whether it doesn't. And that's okay. If you've come out of this and you're thinking U of T is not the right fit for you, we're happy to have helped you make that decision. One way or another, if we've helped you, um, that's what matters. So I would say just continue with this. Continue with researching schools, continue with attending events. Um, 
take your time making the decision. It doesn't need to be something that's rushed. Like Taylor said, having that long period of time where she put off making the decision, she kind of made it for herself. And I feel the same way. I kind of flip-flopped back and forth. I felt like I had to make a decision really quickly. And you don't. You have quite a lot of time to make sure you're making a decision that's the best fit for you. Um, so research and take your time. Thank you. Taylor? Um, I think one piece of advice would be don't be afraid to ask anyone you know who's already in university, see what their experience is like, see if they like their programs, see if they know people at other universities, how they're doing, um, just because that's how I actually got connected to a bunch of people within the Faculty of Music before I even got here, so that was a great place to start. And then also, if you have the chance, I know it's tricky with COVID, um, but being able to go to all the campuses can be really nice because I know when I was looking at schools, um, since I had to go to each school to audition, I walked around some campuses or some cities and I was like, yeah, this, this isn't the right fit for me. Like, I don't really want to live here. So I think just being able to go see the place and kind of see if you like the vibe it has and if that's somewhere you can see yourself living. Kristen? Yeah, to kind of like piggyback off of that, um, definitely try, I, like I said, like said before, like it can be a little bit difficult with COVID, but definitely try and see the campuses and go in person um, just so you can see if you can see yourself there. And another piece of advice I would give is also to um, check out the clubs and extracurricular activities that are on the campuses or on the at the universities. Um, I knew I wanted to get involved in music, not necessarily through taking courses, but at least as a club to keep up with that. Um, so I found out that they had the Glee Club. So I was like, okay, great. I can definitely go here. Um, and I saw that they had music off. And so, yeah, definitely look at the clubs and try and visit campus as if you can. Thank you. Sorry. Oh boy, last words, a lot of pressure. Um, I would say uh, one thing to pay attention to is that when universities kind of talk about themselves to prospective students, they often talk about everything they offer to all of their students, right? So the support services that everybody gets, the campus that everybody uses. Um, but what's important is that when you go in, you'll often identify with a single department or a single faculty um, that'll govern a lot of your, your experience right now. So all of my courses right now are offered by, you know, my department of molecular genetics. And so I would say, in addition to looking at the school as a whole, um, consider the subsets of the school that you'll be in. So go check out the department's webpage, go check out, you know, the faculty faculty's webpage um, and see really the specific parts of your experience that you would be, that you would be getting at the university. Our last words, you nailed it. So that was really good. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to all our panelists. I really enjoyed hearing your perspectives, your advice. You guys were very amazing. And I really do enjoy uh, doing the student panels because all our students are so impressive. Um, so as a reminder, um, if you had any questions that you didn't get answered, we do have a Q&A at 4 p.m. where you are able to ask any questions to our recruiters. Um, please make sure to keep engaged with us and visit our website, discover.utoronto.ca. And then also you can find uh, the Zoom link for the next session, so our mock lecture um, on our Start Here website, which is just discover.utoronto.ca slash start here. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. You've been a really great audience um, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone.